God is good friends again in the name of Father Son and Holy Spirit amen so this evening I'd like us to meditate a little on Genesis chapter 25 from verse 29 to 33 and talks about Esau coming to his brother Jacob and is famished he's hungry and he, he finds Jacob is preparing stew some food some soup and he begs his brother to give him some but the brother is a trickster and he says swear to me first so Esau sold Jacob his birthright under oath Jacob then gave him some bread and the lentil stew and Esau ate, drank, got up and went his way. Esau cared little for his birthright. Great lesson to learn from the story of these two guys. The lifestyle of Esau teaches us something very important in our Christian journey, in our Christian life. Es Esau was famished, he was hungry. And then he finds his brother cooking some food. He tells his brother, give me some of that soup. I am starving. Some of that red stuff. I am starving. But Jacob says, I'll give it to you on one condition. If you sell off your birthright to me. And Esau sells off the birthright to Jacob and takes the soup. You see, the hunger that Esau experienced is referring to every material desire, every fleshly hunger, every fleshly desire and the food that Jacob prepared is the immediate available satisfaction of that hunger that we have but just like Esau was able to sell his birthright for a plate of soup. So many times we sell eternal blessings, we give up eternal blessings, we give up great and greater opportunities just for the mere satisfaction of a moment or the mere pleasure of a moment or a offer a material gain we sacrifice spiritual gain for a material gain you know the birthright of Esau was it meant that Jesus that that Esau would be the rightful um, descendant of Abraham through whom all the promises God had given Abraham would, would flow so Jesus was to come through 
Esau. If, if we were to follow the the exact um, uh, conditioning, the exact um, uh, role, responsibility, duty of the firstborn. So the responsibility of the family fell upon the shoulders of the firstborn child. So the Abrahamic covenant was to be passed through the firstborn. The firstborn. The firstborn child. And this is why in the time of the time of Abraham, the firstborn he got by Hagar was chest. Because if he stayed by right, he had to inherit everything of Abraham, including the the blessing of the covenant that God had made with Abraham. So, but because he was not the child of the promise, he had to be let go. He was just. Now, the person who was by right, by right, to receive the Abrahamic blessing, the covenant, the blessings of the covenant God had made with Abraham was Esau. That's why he it's called the rights of the firstborn. So the, the firstborn had rights. Right to inheritance. Not simply wealth. Not simply cattle and sheep and land and gold and silver. But also of responsibility. Inheritance of responsibility. And inheritance of the blessings that were flowing from Abrahamic covenant. Jacob understood that he had no right, he had no single right to the inheritance that was due to Esau. And Jacob understood the eternal implication, the eternal consequence the heavenly, the spiritual consequence of the birthright of the firstborn. He understood that every promise that God made to Abraham was by right to the firstborn child. He understood that the Messiah was to come through the one who has the right to the inheritance and that right was for Esau. So in, in having such a foresight into the divine things of God, into the divine things of God, he used, he used his knowledge and the availability of his material possession, of his abilities to take over, to take over that inheritance, that right. Now, meanwhile, Esau, who by nature and by culture and by generation has the right to the Abrahamic inheritance, He's careless. He's short-sighted. He only thinks of the body. He doesn't care about spiritual wealth. He doesn't care about spiritual riches. And this is why he was ready. He was ready to give up all this spiritual wealth spiritual heritage 
spiritual inheritance things God had stipulated, mentioned, listed under the Abrahamic covenant Esau was ready to give up all that just for food, just for bread, just for food. Well, he was hungry, but this also, the food and the soup he ate is also a sign and a representation of every material thing we want to acquire or of every fleshly desire that we want to satisfy. Now, the danger lies in here that sometimes when we satisfy some of these fleshly desires or we are so much consumed by material wealth, it comes at a price of the spiritual wealth, the spiritual inheritance, the spiritual blessing. And like Esau, very many times we have preferred the, 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 the plate of stew, we have preferred Jacob's, Jacob's lentils, we have preferred Jacob's bread to the blessing of the covenant the blessing of, of God. Maybe let me just give some examples. Opening up your business shop on a Sunday simply because you want to get money and you miss mass. You are acting like a son. You are going for Jacob's plate of soup and sidelining and giving up the blessings of the covenant. You are selling your birthright. Your birthright. Now take an example of so you get you get a wife culturally. And you know that in the teaching of the church, you cannot receive the Eucharist when you are not sacramentally married. And you stay with, in cohabitation for so long without a proper reason. And you are not even thinking about fixing it. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. What have you done? You have gone for the plate of soup and given up the rights of the firstborn. Beware of Jacob's soup. Beware of Jacob's plate. Beware of Jacob's stew. No, it is small things. It was just as a plate of soup. Just soup that caused Esau not to become one of the ancestors of Jesus. Not to take the blessings that were to him by right, by right of birth. We can lose so many blessings just because of a small, simple thing. Very small, simple thing. Very small plate of food. Was it not just the fruit of the tree that caused Adam and Eve to lose paradise? It was small. Just the fruit. Small things can make us lose big things. And it becomes worse when small things, material things, fleshly things, cause us to lose 
huge spiritual wealth spiritual wealth guard your spiritual wealth against Jacob's stew beware of Jacob's stew don't risk and partake of Jacob's stew because it comes with a price it comes with a price it comes with a price And you know the Bible says that Esau he did not think about the matter anymore. People who, who whose life and concern is only the belly and who cannot think of their spiritual state, who cannot think of their the afterlife, life after death. The health of the soul, they're like Esau, who only think of satisfying the belly, only think of drinking and partying and nothing else, of this body, of this flesh. This is why Jesus said, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word, every word but on the, that proceeds from the mouth of God means man has man is not just this material being flesh and hunger and thirst and sleep and food no man has a higher life that's a spiritual life which cannot be nourished by bread but it's nourished by the word of God and that word of God is Jesus is Jesus but many times we sell our spiritual life, the spiritual blessings, the spiritual wealth for bread of Jacob, for the soup of Jacob. Beware of Jacob's stew. You're blessed. And good night. Please subscribe.